Okay, so welcome to this next video on caviole and nitric oxide synthase 3. So we are discussing how exactly you can target uh, the enzyme nitric oxide synthase 3, the structure of which we've drawn here, to uh, the caviole of the cell membrane of the endothelial cell. Okay, right. Uh, so we've discussed that there are these two ways, really, to target a protein to uh, a cell membrane structure. Either you can give it a domain whereby it can bind to proteins which are already in the cell membrane, or you can attach lipids to the protein, which can then uh, anchor it in the phospholipid bilayer. So let me just give you a reminder of the structure of the phospholipid bilayer. So the phospholipid bilayer is a bilayer of phospholipids, which means that um, you have lots of phospholipids together. So let me show you firstly the structure of a phospholipid, and then I'll explain what a cell membrane actually is. So phospholipids, as a cartoon, can be drawn like this. Okay? So they have these two long-chain carboxylic acids, which I'll colour in orange here. So these are long-chain carboxylic acids which have been esterified to the first and the second hydroxyl group of a glycerol molecule. And we'll denote the glycerol molecule in green here. Okay, so what you have done is you've taken these fatty acids, or long-chain carboxylic acids as their proper uh, chemical name, uh, well, chemistry name would be. So fatty acids which are equal to long chain carboxylic acids. And you have used that um, carboxylic acid group uh, to esterify it with an alcohol group uh, that is on the glycerol molecule. So you have taken two long chain carboxylic acids and you've esterified them to the first and the second hydroxyl groups of your glycerol molecule here. Okay, then onto the third hydroxyl group of glycerol, you've stuck a phosphate group here. Okay. So that represents a phosphate group. Right, so that's uh, a cartoon structure of um, a phospholipid. So that this is, this by the way, is the structure of a phospholipid. It's glycerol with two fatty acids is stirified to it. And then in the final third hydroxyl group, you then have a phosphate group. So that's why it's called a phospholipid, because you've got a phospho phosphate group, and then you've got a lipid structure here. So phospholipid. And uh, the old name for a phospholipid is a phosphatidate molecule. Phosphatidate. So that's a name that you may well hear sometimes, especially if you're talking to a biochemist. Right. Okay. Uh, so um, how do you um, create a bilayer of these, basically? Well, um, the phospholipid, or the phosphatidate molecule, is amphipath uh, well, amphiphilic, basically. Uh, it has polar groups, and it also has nonpolar groups. So these long-chain carboxylic acids are extremely nonpolar. None of the bonds they have will have charges. Um, and they don't even have dipoles, basically, because uh, you've got carbon and bonded to other carbon atoms and then bonded to hydrogen. And neither the hydrogen or the carbon has... Um, it doesn't have a very large electronegativity gradient, so you don't get an uneven distribution of electrons, really. So you don't get any charges here at all. The distribution of charge is just equal, and everything's neutral. Okay? Whereas this group up here, this is negatively charged. So we have this negatively charged region, which um, makes it polar, and uh, this neutral region, this extremely neutral region, now, uh, let's think about the structure of water. If we look at water here, it has these two bonds. Uh, well, the oxygen atom has these two bonds with hydrogen. Now, in these uh, covalent bonds, oxygen donates an electron and hydrogen donates an electron in both cases. Now, uh, these electrons are going to feel a pull from both the oxygen nucleus and the hydrogen nucleus, because both the oxygen nucleus and the hydrogen nuclei have uh, protons in which have a positive charge. Now, the pull they feel by the oxygen nucleus is going to be greater than the pull they feel by the hydrogen nucleus. Um, 
that the way we say that the pull that the high oxygen nucleus exerts on these electrons is greater than the pull that the hydrogen nucleus exerts on the uh, electrons is we say oxygen has a greater electronegativity. Oxygen has a greater electronegativity than hydrogen. So electronegativity just refers to the, um, the pull of a nucleus um, of a chemical of an atom basically on the electrons so oxygen's nucleus is better at pulling on electrons basically than hydrogen's nucleus so oxygen has a greater electronegativity than hydrogen okay so what happens is that these electrons in these two bonds they spend more of the time around the oxygen than they do around the hydrogen now this leaves the hydrogen slightly positively charged and it leaves the oxygen slightly negatively charged Okay, so even though this molecule as a whole is neutral, the charge density is different, basically. You have a lot of negative charge sort of centered around this oxygen atom here, and you have less charge uh, centered around the, uh, the uh, protons, basically. You have more, um, the electrons are mainly centered around the oxygen rather than the hydrogen. So you do have an unequal distribution of charge intramolecularly. You don't even have that in these, um, these hydrophobic tails. The distribution of charge intramolecularly is, um, is um, even, basically, or well, nearly even. Uh, so uh, we have this group that actually is charged. This is more than just having an, an uneven distribution of charge intra, inter, well, intramolecularly. This actually does have a charge. Uh, so this will interact quite nicely with water because it will like to interact with these protons, okay? So the protons uh, will energetically, favorably interact with this uh, negatively charged phosphate group. Whereas water molecules won't interact nicely with these fatty acids here. So, uh, what happens is what you can create is a phospholipid bilayer where you have these phosphate groups lined up like so. Okay, so you have loads of phosphate groups and then you'll have more phosphate groups on this side. Uh, and let's say we'll, have, we'll draw them this way as well. Okay, so basically what happens is the hydrophobic tails all face the inside here. So you form these two layers of phospholipids. This is why it's a phospholipid bilayer. You've got one layer of phospholipids facing the extracellular uh, fluid. So let's say this is the extracellular fluid out here. Okay, extracellular fluid. And this layer that faces the extracellular fluid, this is the outer leaflet outer leaflet of the phospholipid bilayer. You've then got another layer, which is called the inner leaflet of the phospholipid bilayer. Inner leaflet. And this pen is starting to go, I think. Um, yes, we'll cut this video here whilst I just get a new pen.